happy Thursday evening. I saw you were burning the midnight oil just now. I was. Yeah, I, I, I had this idea. I'm like, wait a minute, I got to do that. So I wanted to get I got to fit them in when I can, because I'm in the middle of writing a book. And if I got 10, 15 minutes, I'll I'll try and fit some kind of project in. But you do that three, four times a day. Also, and you save yourself an hour, hour and a half. And you're what, 20 percent more productive than the average person then? So did you just work all day or did you get to go on a hike? Oh, no. Or? no, no. I um I wrote all day. I woke up. I was in these pajamas until about 1 p.m. <laughs> the great one. Tactic. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was writing from 7:30 to 1 at the house and then I changed and I was going to go to the gym, but I just went to town, ran some errands and then I sat at a, a coffee store for another three hours and wrote and dude i almost banged out an entire chapter in one day nice yeah yeah so uh, but that doesn't leave much time for anything else so. well how much uh how much more time do you think it'll take for you to finish this about a month it's gonna take a month uh the good news is that the the first chapter was the hardest because that lays down the thesis and you want to make sure it's capturing and all that and people are invested after that so i did i'm pretty sure a brilliant job with it Awesome. Um, yeah, but then the next four chapters are all data. So it's like my old job. Like I got a bunch of economic data and charts and I just plop them in and explain them, plop it in and explain. So it's kind of, that's, that's one of the reasons I could bang out a chapter in a day. Nice. One more month. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, tonight's beer of the evening is called, uh, it's Goose Island, which used to be only local here and, and around and surrounding areas. And of course the company that owns Budweiser bought them in 2014. Why, why did you buy it? If it owns Budweiser? Well, uh, I'd never had this brand before. It's called the juicy beer hug. And, you know, I like uh -huh. my hazy IPAs and it's, uh, 7.3%. I don't think like Budweiser and, and Goose Island itself, I don't think they're too closely related. It's just kind of the same. Company. Well, you're an account. <laughs> they're, not, they're not closely related. They're just the same company. <laughs> Hang on. Goose Island ownership. Bud. They own Budweiser. like they own something like 25 different brands of beer or something. But yeah, it is under the same umbrella. It was store. sold. All right. Yeah. It was sold. It's not like. Budweiser has a 5% interest. They are a wholly owned subsidiary of Budweiser. So when you bought that, what did you do? Uh, I technically did buy a Budweiser beer, but it was just one. one no, I so don't. I I, <laughs> we got to go to Target. I, I just, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, sh I'm, I'm a little truthful here. I'm a bit ashamed. Well, hold on. You can't tell me that your GF doesn't occasionally want to go to Target and goes to Target. She occasionally maybe wants to go to Target, <laughs> of which I admonish her, and we go out of our way to avoid Walmart. I don't go to Target. I don't buy Budweiser. I don't. I even went so far. All right, who makes um, Gillette? Who's the parent company of Gillette? Is it Procter and Gamble? Procter and Gamble. Yeah. Do you use Old Spice? No, I don't. Okay, good. Don't use Old Spice. Do you That's use funny. what? I think it's Crest. I don't quote me on it, but like no. I don't. I go to the the extent to make sure I don't buy Procter and Gamble. Everyone complaining about the socialism, and the one thing you got to do is not give your money to corporations that hate you. And you gave your money to a corporation that hates you. It's getting increasingly hard to find a company like that. But anyway, fine, um, starve them out. Well, well, let me see if this is worth all the abuse, at least. If it's not, I'll be so pissed. Well, um, it's okay, a citrusy yeah. haze, which is my brand, so we'll see. Is that Dillavany, Mulvaney, <laughs> fake vag juice you drink in there? What is it? And there goes the monetization. And there goes, no, it's still, still monetizable. Man, I'm so ashamed. Because it's good, damn is it. it good? Well, I almost wanted to hate it. But it's I, like, I liked Old Spice deodorant. I don't use it anymore. You like that? I never liked Old Spice. Yeah, I liked Old um, Spice. We were an Old Spice family. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, we, <laughs> we got an interesting... Well, first of all, Clary, what's the date today? It's almost over. But 14th. Oh, you're coming up on your uh, corporate deadline. Tomorrow. Right. And I wanted to provide... It's been quite a difference between this year and last year, which you'll be really... Since you're ashamed of me, I'm going to redeem myself. A little right ashamed. Now. A little. You know. little. Okay. Well, first of all, as you can see, I'm back in uh, my northern command, my home. I was gone for almost three weeks. Um, so it is a little bit good to be back, uh, mainly because of the weather.
But at, at the beginning of the week, you know, on Monday, I still had a shit ton of people who had not done their S corp. So for those who don't know, March 15th is the deadline, filing deadline for S corporations and partnerships. So when you file a six month extension, obviously September 15th is the very last day in the year you can do it. Mm. And at the beginning of the week, there was a lot of outstanding stuff. You know, I, I warned people. I'm like, listen, if you're going to wait that long, everything better be in perfect fucking order. You know, right. when you send it to me, no back and forth, perfectly right. sorted. You got this. I got it. I can't receipts. I, you know what? There were a couple of hiccups, you know, in the last few days. And I did do a lot of work. But I have to say, people who I who I really yelled at and threatened to fire and, you know, did the old Japanese refusal last year, they mm -hmm. fell in line this year. Well, everything was pretty well in order. Isn't it interesting? how you get the best treatment from people by being mean and angry with them you laugh but where did being a hey by the way this is a book written by a guy called nice guy that's his pen name Len. Land he, and he loser. go he refers to himself as nice guy guess where so about this much of the book this thick part is him being a nice guy guess where it got him uh, I'm going to imagine it led him to write a book about not being a nice guy. And then the last third, guess what happens? Uh, his life, uh, he slept with models. He built a million dollar. Well, business. maybe not. No, not, not that far, but he became the bad guy. Oh, and then his life got better. Never Honestly. treat people, never treat people. Well, always be angry and be pissed off at them. And it works. You'll get them to do what they need to do. I kind of hate to agree with you on this because it is kind of against my nature a little bit but i've been doing that lately and it mm -hmm. works i, I well, it does work well i mean come on if, if you evaluate it how successful were you with the carrot the karens the carrot 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 oh. versus the stick carrot <laughs> oh because i got a story about a karen in a second but yeah oh, okay. the, the, that never worked because i mean people were just if you give people a little bit of an inch at least in my business they will take a whole ocean right that's just how it is I am I'm for the abuse and and causing people pain. I'm for that because it <laughs> results in results. That's that's it. Well, uh you'll uh, I <laughs> believe me, I'm getting better at this partially due to your influence, partially due to a certain dentist's influence, so I've got a lot of <laughs> a lot of help You here. you might have been burned from uh a uh, fiery redhead that knew everything and taught you work. Were how did the, how did how much niceness did you give that girl? Out of curiosity, you must have been the nicest guy to that one, and she was a nightmare. Well, all I can say is I almost got arrested. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know what? She never knew. She never knows this. She does not know. She does not know that you are the reason that I'm with somebody so much better and happier and I'm a better dude for it. That's what's so crazy. I've, I've kept that from her. But if I you ever gotta, did hear that. You, I, I should email her because in my <laughs> in my email, I told her I would call upon my entire audience and find someone younger and better looking. And you did. I didn't get the younger part, but I did you get the better to. looking part. Yeah, I didn't have yeah. to. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. um. And yeah, so just, I don't know, let it drop. Like, oh yeah, clearly set me up with her. <laughs> well, she turned 40 a couple weeks ago. So, yep, there's that. Yeah, she looks like she's 60. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I texted you this yesterday. Um, there's a bit of a follow-up. I got this email from the worst motherfucking Karen um, recently. I got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to set the table and then I'm going to give you the update. Uh, so let me, I, I've got the emails here. So I get a lot of, you know, new client requests. I'm full. I have a bunch of different colleagues here who I immediately send everybody to. I get a little kickback, whatever. And by the way, when you're going to start your own practice, you guys, and you get into this position, I strongly recommend you do the same thing. Anyway, I got an email from this woman on, I think it was Monday. Yeah. Monday, September 11. Yeah. I'm going to read the email to you. This is the initial one. Uh, we, have it, this is, we have an accountant, but we are looking for a boutique accounting firm. We would like personal tax service. Okay. Personal tax service. Yeah. Okay. That's the first thing I was like, what do you mean by that? But you understand when I hear personal tax service, I hear, I want, you know, 
personal tax return service, not business tax return service, not partnership. Oh, you want okay. Personal, right. You're not okay. thinking hand holding. You're thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So as customary and up until now, nobody ever had a fucking problem with this. I simply forward the email to, you know, a colleague, a given colleague and the colleague without me responding or anything, the colleague will write back and say, Hey, you know, I'm so-and-so CPA or EA Chad Elkins, you know, he got your email, but he's unable to bring on new clients. However, I am, we've worked together. Mm -hmm. How can I be of assistance? Okay. Well, listen to this. Um, this is what I sent you yesterday. I got this mm -hmm. yesterday. The same woman writes back and goes, hi, Chad. I am very disappointed. I contacted you through your website to talk to you about doing our taxes. Instead, you pass my information to a man that is a virtual accountant. I said in my email I was looking for personal tax services. You gave my name to someone with no business address. I don't think I'm looking for someone to give my personal information to that does not have an office. If you do not want to talk to me or take on new clients, you should at least have the professional courtesy to contact the person yourself. I'm so disappointed in this whole situation. Sorry I contacted you and for wasting everybody's time. Including her own. Okay. Th this was when I took a screenshot and I texted it to you. I was like, all right. first of all, uh, what do you think? So the candidate actually found, what do you think? The demographic of this woman was she had a very unique oh, name first well, and last you, name. You, it was a hyphenated last name, is what I observed. Oh, oh yeah, was I right? It was a hyphenated. Yes, she yes, didn't. That were. wasn't her, okay. Hyphenated name. I'm going to absolutely guess 100 white woman. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, all right. And I'm going to. I'm going to guess. Uh, Think about the entitlement. When she said boutique, I was going to guess like 50, 52. But when she said boutique, that me I'm gonna guess sixty two, just on the young side of retirement age. Seventy two. Okay, seventy two. Seventy two. Right. So we're we already have an entitled miserable boomer, boomer. like liberal right. liberal woman. <laughs> so I was talking to them about this. Um, I was FaceTime with the candidate last night, kind of talking about this, and I was like, "Yeah, that was you know the nerve on this bitch," and. Um, and so I was, I was asking her, you know, what do you think I should do? I was like, I'll probably just let it go. I won't even respond, whatever. Who cares? And she's like, well, let me see if I can find the woman. Because so I gave her okay. her name. Little little sleuthing. Little sleuthing. And she found her Facebook profile and, and you know, told uh -huh. me where to find it. And I died. Now, I'm be careful. Gonna, don't don't mention not, any not, individual. Okay. Oh, no, right. Don't worry. All right. All I don't right. do that. All right. um, I won't say what profession she's in, but needless to say, there was a picture of her, her you know, her professional picture, okay? Uh -huh, her professional uh -huh. one that looked right. nice and young. And because it was Facebook, then you saw her real picture. Dude, there was at least a 30-year difference between yeah. what she's putting on her business card and what she actually looks like. Uh, can I assume that her profession is uh, a, a waste of GDP? that her profession is worthless in my opinion. Oh, wait, but yes. she might be retired. No, no, she's still, she's working. still working. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, in my opinion, yes, you might disagree that her position, I, I sincerely think you may disagree, but I've okay. always felt this profession is highly overrated. And there's can even you, people. Can you send it to me in the private chat what it is? Let me know. And I won't, sure. I won't say what it is. Yeah. Um, we might as well teach you if you're going to be a professional podcaster, how to use the private chat. Don't put it in comments. Put it in not, private not, chat. Not yet. Right. In my opinion, these are a waste of space, but I think you would disagree. I didn't see anything. I put it in the private chat. Did you hit? Did you hit send? Yeah. Speaking of boomers, oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. At What's that your age, on those? yeah. Come at on that now. age, no, she didn't save no money. She didn't save any money. I I know they are critical to the economy. Yeah. Some are worth their weight in gold. But if you're that age and you're doing that, get, get yeah, you did save your money or your husband's uh, settlement. That's and remember what I said, how there was the professional picture and then there was the real picture. Right. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we won't share what it is, but no. So anyway, I was, I was telling the candidate, I'm like, I think I'll probably just let it go. You know, who gives a shit? We all had a laugh. And then she goes. Maybe you should try something else. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read the email that I, I ended up responding. I'm gonna read the email. You okay, have to remember, I love you. I'd my love goal John. was only to make her feel like shit, nothing more. 
I was good. not adding revenge. I just wanted her to feel bad. Good, okay? good date. Man, look at my boy coming Aren't you up proud here. Of me? Very proud. Very then you you threw it all away drinking Dave Mullaney's, you know, hoo-ha <laughs> juice. But that's all right. You support the cow. How did you how did you strike back and make this miserable woman's life even more miserable? Well, allow me to read it. And it was up, but okay. So I said, um, I almost said her name there. I you said be careful. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I go, so-and-so, um, and then I named the colleague that wrote back to her where she was like, how right. dare you do that? I go, so and so, I've asked so-and-so to handle my emails and respond to all referrals because I'm currently in the hospital with cancer. So apologies <laughs> that I was not able to, you know, meet your expectations. I wish you luck in finding an account. And this is a candidate's idea because she's like, because of HIPAA, you can never confirm that. Like, there's no okay. way. She yeah, never there's no way. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then she replied to me today, and I'm going to read that. Um, I what? Okay. Reply. This is. Oh God. This is great. Yeah. Give me one sec. I lost it for a second. Um, but yeah. So I. She did. Um, my goal was accomplished. Uh, she goes, "Hi, Chad. My apologies. I am so sorry. I hope you are feeling better and get home soon. Soon. Soon." I just, I just didn't think that you would pass me off. I read all your reviews and thought you would be a good fit for me and my husband because we really need tax help. I really apologize and hope you get well soon. I feel horrible about this. Sincerely, sincerely, and then her name. So her that name. was all I wanted. I just wanted to make her feel bad. I didn't give a shit about anything. I, I have a question, sir. Question. Yeah. Uh, uh, her and her husband at this age <laughs> need a tax accountant? A little sad, what, isn't it? What? What? Can you boomers? Here's I got two two simple requests for boomers. Okay, one, before you die, can you at least get some of your financial act together? Like honest to God, you're in your seventies. The other thing is, I think I'm going to go and get a bobcat and put a plow on the front, <laughs> so that anytime I go to Walmart or Menards or any place that's in public, what do boomers do? What do boomers do in public when you're at stores or, or particularly stores? What do they do? Well, they like to virtue signal. Is that what you're talking about? No, or? no, no. They Compl like to. This is a new Complain. thing. They complain. No, no, no. This is a new thing they've been doing about the past five years. It, it was sent out in ARP. They like to stop in the middle of doorways or walkways or aisles. And block. So, and block, right? Yes. And then talk. So you go out Airport. the door but there's boomers standing there oh my goodness i get metamucil and and i'm not kidding like <laughs> chad all day man i could just shove them flat on their face and see <laughs> Billy go face down and need denture work i could do it all day or like you're you know there's in walmart there's like the little aisles right they got the the sign okay yeah. this is plumbing that's tape this is bocce ball oh i'm gonna go down the bocce ball aisle. so they never stop there but in the main through fairs they will stop in the middle of that oh i could i i could chad i could just like dominoes just shove them all down when's the last time you flew it's been a few months right it's been a while yeah it's well been i've been flying a lot you know the past few weeks dude mm -hmm. it's these boomers that are it, they just make it so much slower again they're old i get it but they just don't care they do not. Get no, they don't care. No, no, no. They, it's a choice. It's not like they don't know, especially the the riot act I got from my parents. Like, go to this, pull up your pants, stop doing this. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah. It's like, okay, all right. And now, oh, like, don't you act like that. I'll leave you in a ditch. I am not even getting you to a government nursing home. I will leave you in a ditch. You knock it off with that boomer shit right now. Get your head out of your <laughs> ass and go back to the way you were in 1981. Um, I'm not going to confirm any of your guesses, but I'm just going to say a lot of you guys have hit the actual profession in the chat. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. A lot of people got this. I'm, I'm going to give you 89%. 89? 89%. Of How could the I have improved? That, that, uh, that you regained 89% of my lost respect for you after supporting communists that's uh <laughs> i see so you got uh, still a little bit of 11 percent shame but you you recovered nicely with that one i'll take a b plus i'll take it uh mm -hmm. all right well if uh anything else you want to add to start otherwise i'm going to get to some of the super chats here i know it's pretty late and I got no i have i just i enjoy 
I, I just, I will, here's the only thing I would add to this to make people happier. <clears throat> Cause you always try to find the, the positive in mm -hmm. things to fight anger and anger management. Think, I don't, I know everyone hates the boomers, but imagine what it's like to be this gal with her in a hyphenated name, work in that field. <laughs> I need a tax accountant. Unless your tax accountant died, but I'm just going to assume. Clary, let me read her initial rest message to me again. It's very okay. short. All right. We have an accountant, but we are looking for a boutique accounting firm. We would like personal tax service. Remember, I thought that was personal tax return service. Right. They, may they want more attention. Right. I'm sorry, lady, but you're not worth that. You nope. are not worth that to any of us. There's a shortage, and we ain't interested in entitled boomers like you. When, when they said boutique, that's what gave Because there's like boutique financial planning and boutique, and it's like, oh, you'll have your biscotti and espresso <laughs> out for them when they show up at your little coffee store office. You know, the irony being, I don't even have an office, and she's like, you, re you referred us to a virtual account. Lady, most accountants are... are virtual now so nah. fuck you nah. <laughs> where am i All right. yeah, well, he's yeah. Right. They na probably nagged the original yeah too yeah, much. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, the boomers man it's the boomers you uh you retweeted a canadian cpa who had a tweet about like there's there's not a there's way more of you than us and you yeah. all need us i mean i'm i'm abbreviating what she said but it seems our canadian brethren up there are, are experiencing the same same basically mm. what your average client slash customer or perspective doesn't understand is that you know the competition we're not there's no competition between us fighting them mm. you know they got to compete with other clients because there are the so many other clients that are better than they are and you're that's what they're competing against they have it flipped yep and this yep. woman didn't understand that so no. she'll she'll soon find out mm -hmm. what was she looking is she preparing for next year or were there undoubtedly she has not filed her 2022 yet okay that's what i was going. all right so yeah. this is an extension this is okay. an extension right. i you right. know what i almost replied to her was i almost gave her directions to like the nearest h and r block based on her neighborhood because i was like well here you go this looks pretty boutique and you'll get plenty of personal service hey, personal there service, in office. Right. Yep. fucking boomer um <laughs> all right so know chat. why your dad doesn't tune into the show hey did you show your dad the wife joke from last episode He's, they've been on an alaskan cruise for the last week and a half so they, they don't have they yet. don't have no, internet out no, they're okay. off the all grid right. and right, even boy. if i send I, i'll try but my dad's just not very entertained by us it's so sad yeah he's he's giving me the finger well he, he likes be, you he just doesn't want to like sit this. through our shows he's like well, he guys Bring it up, cue it up to the minute and the second where we do the wife joke and just send that. <laughs> It'd be a 10, 10 second video. I will. By the uh, way, I, I get this one too. Do you give senior discounts? <laughs> no, I hike it up for you motherfuckers. All right, all right. Let's get some of the dudes in the <sighs> chat. Parker, good to see you. Um, give me an update when you can. Uh, James, my original European accountant in the UK. Yep. Uh, wow, how are you awake right now, dude? It's like 4 a.m. He's over in the United Kingdom. But it's 4 a.m. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh. In, in the UK? Yeah. yeah. All right, Clary. Larry David, two bucks. Supporting the podcast that gets me through a work day. He's in public accounting. He's working long days. Is so. he? Oh, that's right. Yeah, it is. It's the second busy season. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll read this one. Uh, this is a fellow accountant. Yeah. Cappy, you need to figure out how to merch those PJs to look good on you. <laughs> I have looked into merch and... um. They're all a pain in the ass and yeah. they're overpriced. Yeah. Like be if Jill, if you want to, why don't you email me, Jill, and let me know if you're willing to pay $50 for a hoodie. Cause that's what really? it would be on. Oh yeah. These like, uh, what is it? Red bubble and all these other places. It's, it's very expensive. And if you do anything slightly edgy, like a funny may mm -hmm. or pinup girls or anything, or like guns, a lot of them will not allow gun silhouettes or anything. Really? It, yeah. Oh, it's horrible. It's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. Jeez. So I see all these guys like Joker from Better Bachelor, you know, Mr. Ball and all these other people doing yeah. merch, but man. 
Yeah. Well, I go look at the prices. I I just they're have high. a hard time. Yeah, I have a hard and they're not. And just so you know, guys, your favorite podcast or internet person is not trying to gouge you. Mm -hmm. The merch store is charging that much. So it's it's um, you know, just just so you know, you don't say, Oh, I can't believe he's charging that much. Like he ain't. I didn't know it was that bad. Jeez. Non-stop Dre, five bucks. It is because minorities are more likely to do things under the table. Good thing <laughs> Cappy is five one because he loves being over being looked <laughs> down by others. Yeah, and Qatar or Qatar, I bet they're all shorter than you are. I right? don't I don't think it's I honestly coming up to the topic, I don't think it's because minorities do things under the table. No, that's not what's uh, going yeah, on no, at all. Not, I mean they might, um, but I, that, I don't think yeah. they're below the radar on the income level. Is this is I'm gonna saying. be an interesting one. Okay. All right. Chase Robito, five bucks. Happy Escort Partnership Extension Day Eve. Yep. Thank you very much, Chase. Yeah. Didn't you just start? Or did they throw you into the deep end with that? I'm curious if you're working on that. He's using the same tax program I am. So mm -hmm. you don't really see that in public accounting too much. No days off, five bucks. Cappy, if a chick who used to be a 10 gets fat and doubles her weight, does that mean she's now a 20? <laughs> um, no. That's no. Now, if you're Dre, because he's a brother, he likes the large white women, okay? So he, maybe in, in Dre's <laughs> eyes, see? Dre, I'm going to fight back today, Dre. You know, he likes he likes him a little thicker probably. So, uh, no, uh, it um, I don't know, fat, it's down to like two. Like Dre, that's the single worst thing you can do. That's... Agreed, by the way. Um, Dre, if you're still in the chat, give us a quick update on what the women are like over there because there may not be a lot of selection for you. <laughs> Uh, Chunky Gecko? Do you know this guy? Yeah, yeah, sure. He's been okay, around. Right, he's your. I've never heard of Chunky Gecko. Ten bucks hit, yeah. Chad. Did you read The Joy of Accounting by Peter Frampton? Its color accounting basis framework is doing wonders for my self-study. Any thoughts? I never heard about this. So is this self-study just to learn accounting? Or are you studying for the CPA exams? This sounds kind of interesting. I, did, I really hadn't heard And it's color-coded, like liabilities are hued in red and assets are hued in blue or something. I, this is a first for me, chunky. Give us an update here. This could be interesting. You know what? Why don't you write that down? So when you have your teachable course, on <laughs> accounting careers, you could provide, you could list that as a resource. The joy of accounting. I'm just putting it in my notes here. Thank you. Chunky gecko. Eric, Eric burns marsh, 10 bucks. Chad, a family ignored Mr. Celery's advice and moved to Minneapolis. Yes. <laughs> Did you hear this? No. Okay, it's not a family. It's a single mom and her and her bastard son. But the article wrote a family. So you're thinking like, you know, stupidly a, a nuclear family. family. Yeah, no, yeah. it's just a single mom and her son. And uh, they moved to Minneapolis. And then within three weeks, there were two shootings within a block of her apartment. And now she's going to move. She moved from California. And now she's going to move. And now there's a go there's a GoFundMe to help her move. Move where? I don't know. A slightly less <laughs> shitty part of Minneapolis. I have no idea. I'm gonna I, guess I, she uh, moved to the north side of the city. No, perhaps? she moved to Uptown. But I and I did the research. Uptown, which used to be where all the action is, um, it's <laughs> going down quick, uh, which is great because that was the pretentious area. That's where all really? the coffee. Oh like, yeah, my goodness, the coffee stores. Oh my goodness, and we're all organic and fair trade and free trade, and like, and you got bullets through your window. Um, I can see you miss it there so much. Oh God, it's great just watching that place burn. It's so <laughs> wonderful. Uh, Chad, a family ignored ignored Mr. Celery's advice and moved to Minneapolis. They found out there's violent crime in the Mill City and left after one week. If they itemize, are there? Are any of the three moves deductible? <laughs> so unless you're in the military, no moving expenses are deductible anymore. It's a little mm. bit sad. I always thought they should be at least once a year, but they got rid of that with tax reform. Was that Trump? Trump. Yeah, yeah that Trump was Trump. Tax changes. Yeah. yeah, everyone likes Trump. He's not. He wasn't that good. Mm. Nonstop trade, two bucks. But Cappy, they say 72 is the new 22. Yeah. Where do you see her picture? Well, <laughs> I don't want to clear. And am I thinking Rachel Maddow, thick glasses, uh, that feminist leftist, I know more than you type? Sort of. Yeah. Really maybe not with the hair, hair, but you got the glasses part. I have never uh, seen a bigger contrast in, in this. It's just really I, bad. You know what I get it? Ladies, I know you know you're going to listen. Doesn't it belie the fact that you know this big and beautiful and 20, 72 is the new 22. The fact you post fake 
younger, decade old pictures, tip your hand that you know what men want. Like, didn't you have a, a woman like when you were on the online dating for that bit? She showed up and she was like overweight and she failed to mention she had a kid. Didn't that happen a couple of times? A couple. This is like going back several years ago when I was doing this. This almost was like at least a third of the time. They lie about their appearance. I so mean, they know. Yes, they know. They know. They're still, they're still like, like big is beautiful and shit. I mean. Like, but, but you sheepishly think Chad's going to like bonk his head on the way out there on a tree limb and like, oh, my God, I want a fat, loud, ugly woman with some other guy's crotch fruit. Yeah. I've never. Has it ever worked? This. No, and it's not like they would win me over by their personalities either. They were just, ugh. They Nothing need to be helped. more large and in charge. I bet you it was like, man, she just was not large and in charge enough. If she was only more loud and in my face, then I would have then I would have followed up with the second date. Do you happen to remember? I know I on your show three or four years ago, I mentioned this when this happened to me. Do you remember what their excuse was for not telling me about the kid? They well, meaning it was all the same excuse that multiple women gave well, this you. This one in particular, the last time I remember this, this one, she goes, Child. well, it's, it's for safety reasons because you never know who's like a pervert. I'm like, lady, this is a fucking dating app. It's the, you lied from the get go. It's never going to work out when you lie from the get go about a kid and your appearance. And both were big lies. Believe me. <laughs> Eric Burns, Marsh, two bucks. CPA equals MVP, but puppet arts equals greatest of all time. Puppet arts? Yeah. Remember there was that guy. You know what? Let's look him up. Hang on. <clears throat> this guy got a master's in puppetry. And he puppetry. was with not, not BLM. What was the Occupy Wall Street? Oh, that takes me back, man. That yeah, was like I want to see this guy. I want to see unemployed puppeteer Joe Therian. Now, this is uh, 12 years ago, a dozen years ago. You want to see if he, like, went back to school and got himself a degree in chemical engineering? I just hope he didn't make it on social media or something. Joe Therian. Hang on. Joe Therian puppet. Changed his name, maybe. Maybe. And also, uh, oh, he has an Instagram. Uh <clears throat> I like think Lou this Ann. is the guy because he posts douchey looking shit. Yeah, he looks like he looks like he still thinks it's Minneapolis and a oh, box cutter collective. Bachelors of Fine Arts and Acting and Puppet Arts. Puppet Arts? Yeah, Puppet Arts, University of Connecticut. Oh, yeah. I remember this. This website is ancient. He hasn't really. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to find his, uh, Wikipedia and praise. Yeah. This is all 2011. Man, he's off the radar then. Yeah. He's off the radar. Oh, wait here. After speaking with a, a hidden gem, it became clear. Amazing. Uh, puppets. He's still doing puppets in 2019. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. He gets the girls. Maybe he does. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. No, he, he really doesn't. It's, uh, not with that face, but. This is a good question for you. I think after right. you know the answer. Uh, J double B two bucks. Cappy, how do you keep your cigars from drying out? Oh, you get a humidor. Isn't that what Atham has? Do you have? Yeah, one? yeah Atham has a humidor. Yeah, there's varying. <clears throat> like you don't have to drop the money on a humidor, but you could get them pretty affordable. And all it does is, um, you get like a little puck, or even a bar, and in there is like this sponge-like material, and you fill it with distilled water. And then you just put it in your humidor and that keeps it at the right humidity. And there should be a barometer or whatever measure, a humid mm -hmm. humiditor, something that measures humidity. And you want to keep it at about 70 whatever units per things that humidity is measured in. But you can also just go get these little packets that are like wipe, like those handy wipe packets. But yes, they're, yeah. yeah. We yeah. use those for certain <laughs> other stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you, you and Chong over there, the, the Reno Chong. Uh, By the way, that was a great video you had the other day from some pothead. I actually listened to that whole oh thing. Oh, God. <laughs> See, I mean, I, I don't care if you and Atha, but you guys, like, you know, passed a chemical engineering degree. You run a business. Like, you guys don't go off the rails and send me this no. damn email. Yeah, yeah. 
the best part of that advice was you get everything you need to get done, chores, bills, work, exercise. When it's all mm -hmm. over, then you can indulge. Then you can indulge, right. Don't but yeah, J double B, you can get just a, a a little wood or plastic humidor. You don't have to go, you don't have to go crazy and just have to get some kind of humidifying agent uh that will do that. Now, otherwise, plastic bags with those humidifier packs will yes. work just fine. Yep. Yeah, 10 bucks off Amazon, they'll give you a million of them. Yep. Eric Burns Marsh, two bucks. For the record, I am not, not a, boomer. a boomer. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would... might have said that last week. He's not a well, boomer. He's I thought he was in. Was, is he not a boomer? No, no, he's not. He's about the same age as uh, our favorite dentist around there. 68? Mid 50s. Yeah, mid 50s. Oh, he's that young? Mm -hmm. He looks horrible. <laughs> Make sure to send him. What are we at? 35 and 25 seconds. All right, I'm gonna send our dentist buddy at the, this this timestamp. I'll read this one. Um, channel 19, 20 dollars. That's ten dollars. Thanks, free. Chad. I'll reach out again if needed. Keep up the good work, Dave. Thank you, man. Um, you didn't have to do that. He he hit me up with a question a few hours ago. It ended up being just a quick one, and he offered to pay. And I was like, Well, you don't have to worry about that because mm. you know it ended up being quick to answer. Hey, did you pay um, our other buddy? Our cigar rolling buddy yes. friend, you did. Yes, okay, you and did he was quite him. appreciative, and okay. he, he knew it was from you, and and yeah, so he he. Well, he was it wasn't like I was going to steal the cigars from him or something. I did want to always them. still like the the gesture, so he did get it. So I get I it. understand his wife took all of his money. He's used to people stealing <laughs> his money, so yeah, I could see. But I'm not a woman, so hey, oh, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, Dave, like I said, hit me up if things change with that, but you should be okay. Ms. Meg, how come you got all the girls in your town, man? What's I think going this is on a here? dude, actually. Oh, okay. Five, uh, two bucks. Did a nine mile hike today. Best three hours of my day. I amen. It's a amen. good pace. Yep. yep. I found a new trail that you, me, and Athema are going to go on. It's called Cave Creek. You know why cave? they call it Cave Creek? Because it's got a cave and a creek. It's got a bunch of caves. <laughs> Athem, we get lost there forever. We can leave them there and come back, pick them up seven months later. Athem, look that up. Ray John, two Canadian. <laughs> uh, what do you think about being a prison guard? Does it pay well? Uh, right? Yeah, I guess. But they have no crime in Canada because everyone's just so polite up there. Huh. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Wasn't, wasn't Ray John going to do IT or something? Or yeah, I was going to say, I thought he had other aspirations. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd go do that. Uh, I'm going to read this next one because it pertains to you from Bart Simpson. All right. All quarterly payments needed to be mailed by the 15th, which is tomorrow, so our government does not shut down. Have mercy on our poor government. Clary, mm -hmm. when did you pay your Q3 estimates? July 1st. <laughs> hey, hang on. Let me take a look. Clary's GF, if you're watching this, will you please admonish Gee, him for this? No, it's, it's, uh... oh, that's the gas pill. Oh, you are a girl. I'm sorry. I thought, okay, cool. Oh, she is a girl. Okay. Yeah. No, that's not that. Curious where you hiked. Um, look it up. Oh, Meg, you mean you're not me? Yeah. What the hell? Didn't I? Now you're making me worried. You paid it, dude. You hit me up. You you you. Texted I bragged. Me yeah, like I... two months ago, you messaged. I just paid. It. You paid them. Trust me. Don't worry about it. Hang on, is this my corporate? Oh, that's why this is my corporate checking thing. I'm gonna guess July. I don't know. I'm gonna say you paid July 1st or July 2nd or something. I'm pretty sure it was July 1st. Okay, Ridiculous. the 10th. The oh, this is when I was paying. I paid for mine all the... yesterday, dude. Yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I I um I'm looking at all the expenses I incurred because American Family Insurance did not pay for. Oh, here it is. Oh no. Chad, I slipped. July 10th? 4th, 4th of July on our nation's birthday. I paid. Well, on the one hand, I commend you for paying taxes on the birth of America, considering that's how America was born. On the other mm -hmm. hand, you should have delayed that by two months. But I understand you want to cross it off your to-do list. Right. I get it. Yeah. At least you're paying them, dude. At least you're paying And them. I'm not paying as much as I used to in because I was overpaying. Very much even so. Even to the amount that I was, yes. So I, I um, Although thank I, the I, solar panels for that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Maybe I should be paying in a little bit more. I think uh, you're fine. You're you think I'm fine? fine? All right, we'll find out. All right. Clary, this may be my favorite one. Ass bucket, two bucks. No Vikings sports ball watching tonight, guys? What? Did you know the Vikings are playing a game right now? 
Oh boy, howdy! That's great. The Vikings are playing. What uh, what liberal white men in Minnesota are they all lining the butt cheeks up, spreading it and lubing it up so they might get uh, homoerotically uh, ass effed by the by their favorite uh, sports ball heroes? Would you like to know the score? It would make you happy. Hey, who are they playing? They're playing the Philadelphia Eagles, and with less than two minutes left in the game, the Vikings are losing 34 to 21. So they've lost. They're not going to win that game. Okay. They're not going to win. All right. Yeah. That's good. Oh. DT will be so unhappy. Uh, Dark Man. Hey, Dark Man Jeff. Hey, five Jeff. Five bucks. What's up, Chad and Aaron? How you doing, Dark Man Jeff? Is he, is he officially graduated and working? I think he mentioned he was graduated, and I think he's working. I don't remember what he said about where he's working. But, Jeff, if you want to give us an update in the chat, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, last one from Ray John, then I need a refill. So, Ray John, two bucks. Genie gives you one wish, low taxes or thin women. Ooh. 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 Well, you and I already have women sort of so we yeah, can just, no, yeah but i mean just a, on principle that's like a cop out like let's say we were single boy that's tough <clears throat> that's tough what's what's more unlikely i'm gonna say well geez honestly i think i'm gonna go with the low taxes i'm getting old enough the women aren't like if i was 21 probably i go with the thin women but now that i'm older i, I don't know the low taxes and then go overseas like globally, are we talking like there's no thin women on the planet? Probably low taxes <clears throat> makes the most sense. I, I, mean, I think low yeah. taxes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah. Glory, I'm going to get a refill. You uh, feel free to talk about anything you want. I'll talk about my stuff. Uh, what do I got? Um, I don't know. You guys all know. Uh, Go buy some books, I guess. Uh, let's uh, let me promote my crap books. No one knows about. I always promote the main ones, but let's promote the other ones. Uh, Behind the Housing Crash. That was my first book around two thousand eight. Um, it did well for way back then, and for me being a nobody. But yeah, take a look at that if you want to. If you like economics, go get that one. <clears throat> then we have my compilation, the best of my blog, which you can find on the blog, but it isn't consolidated. It's just it's a blog. So I took my best posts and I compiled them and backed them up in case the, the Googles decided that we don't like what you're saying about low taxes and balanced budgets and treating everyone equally. And uh, so I put I backed it up with Captain Capitalism Top Shelf, Captain Capitalism Reserved, and Captain Capitalism Top Shelf Reserved. What the hell was Maybe there's four. And then there's um. Hang on, I'm a hang. Hang on. Uh, no. Oh, here. All right. <clears throat> this is a good one. Hang on, I'm gonna get this right. Um, where'd it go? There. This one. Love letters to the left. The best of Captain Cavalier. This is probably my peak That's writing. Old one. Yeah, these are all the backup ones. Um, and it's good. To, the problem with blog posts is, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't like a compendium of blog posts, but it is some of my best writing. Like, not all my all topics need a, a 200 page book. And so, um, they don't get memorialized as easily. No, they don't. They don't. And then there's the one Captain Capitalism. Oh, Captain's Quarterly, where I actually got a model to pose in lingerie and bikinis and stuff. Which and, one? Uh, only one. Um, Mary name? Jo. No, no, not Mary Jo. Uh, Sydney? I forget her name. She showed up on time. She did. I wanted to like back up like quarterly, back up my blog, kind of like mm -hmm. a Playboy uh, kind of thing. And uh, you can't find, you know, speaking of thin women, you can't find attractive women to show up on time and do a job right. So uh real quick this is half acre daisy cutter it's uh 20 ounces here but it's only 5.2 percent you can only get this in the chicago area so does I um know. i have a question does the democrat party make that and 50 no. percent of donations go to ocasio quartet no oh okay just they're legit sure. all, they're right, legit. All, right. all right we got i've been <laughs> so i woke up this morning and i did have that work to do i wasn't even gonna do a stream and then i saw this article it's from the new york daily news the title is 
fix the racial inequalities of the IRS. And I was just like, all right, I think I need right to do there, a show right there, this. right there. It's not mo- it, no, no. There's no racial inequality at the IRS. So this was from the New York Daily News. It's actually written by Ed Towns, who was a former congressman. In um, Ed Towns, let me look. Ed him Towns, up. yeah, you'll you'll see. Um, Ed Towns, okay. Uh, New York representative, 1993 retired, to 2013, yeah. retired Democrat. So he's a career politician. Yep. He's a whiny little quantaha. Oh, yep. American educate. Get out of here. Yep. Yep. Get out of here. You didn't help one of your fellow black men. You just bitched and whined like a little girl. Am I Am I right? Am I guessing here? You're not guessing. When okay. I read this article to you, you, you yeah. Well, here we Should go. Should I grab my violin and play while you... Feel free to make appropriate facial gestures or whatever, hand okay. gestures. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> the IRS's new initiative called Direct File, which I did a stream on about a year ago. The IRS is starting something. Um, we'll have the agency prepare low and moderate income Americans taxes in the upcoming tax season. Albeit having good intentions, the IRS and Congress must address the myriad of concerns raised that suggest direct file may inadvertently expand systemic racial inequities. Hey, okay. buddy, it ain't it ain't all about your your skin color. It's just, <laughs> it's, did you see the other article about how there was the the head of the Black CPA Association? I have it up here, actually. You have it up have here? It up okay, right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now that it affects black people, now we got to <laughs> do something about it. Everyone was getting ass raped before, but now, now we got to, now we have to do something. I've been waiting for an opportunity to sort of do that one, but I keep coming up with things like this where I want to, anyway. But it's related, on, go on. It's related, yeah. This wide bipartisan criticism has come with good reason. The nation's tax collector recently admitted to finding systemic racism within its operations, and it's now trying to become the nation's tax preparer before fixing these very real structural problems. A January Stanford University study, which I'm going to mention later, uh, found that's that why black- I think of that study. That's why oh. I think that's that, that's the veracity. What's your the oh, wait, you hear what I think about it. Okay. Um, right. The January Stanford University study found that black taxpayers are audited at 2.9 to 4.7 times the rate of non black taxpayers. This data understandably rubbed Senator Ron Wyden, chair of the Senate Finance Committee, representative, yada, 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 and their colleagues the wrong way. They sent a letter to IRS Commissioner Daniel Werfel demanding to know the truth and the agency's plan to correct this problem. To many policy policymakers surprise, but not mine, the IRS confirmed the study's findings, acknowledging structural inequities while pledging its commitment to, quote, to doing the work to understand and address any disparate impact of the actions that we take. Will this article cover why uh, black ha- uh, black people have a two to four times the rate of audits? No, but I guess who's going to? Okay, because I was about to say if that doesn't make sense to me right there, because it's they don't know you're black. There's clearly is there a box on a tax no, return that no, tells no, that's you? What I'm saying. How did I? I mean, and and it goes through a computer, right? Correct. Right. Correct. So unless there's like it's the parameters. All right. So I'm I'm kind of curious how they came up with this two to four times number. Oh, you'll hear. Okay. All right. Uh, This news is no surprise to many civil rights activists who have sounded alarm bells on the IRS's racial disparities for decades. For example, Georgetown University tax law professor Dorothy Brown, who grew up in New York City, wrote a 2021 book titled, quote, The Whiteness of Wealth. Hang on. What is she? Hang on. I got to look what this woman looks like. What's her name? Dorothy? Dorothy Brown. Dorothy Brown. Yes, Thomas, it George is a machine. Law. It's a machine. It's not a human. God, being. you know, I in simple. Let me let me speak to to Dre and uh, Dark Man Jeff and yeah, um, it's and, and he's right. it's, it's been around forever. Well, but but no, let me let me speak to these guys. Like, okay, I know we complain about the liberal white woman, but man, you guys got some fugly women. Like, what is with they? They don't grow their hair out. It's all the thick glasses. You look at this Dorothy Brown gal. It's just like, do you remember? Um, it it was in the movie uh, Black Panther 
but then it became a hairstyle where women just went black women just went bald because like, they're, no. they're fighters right yeah and i'm just yeah. like like the will smith's crazy <laughs> wife or uh yeah yeah like that yeah, yeah. but you know in here dorothy brown is the same thing and i'm just like, do you do you purposely go out of your way to make yourself look repulsive i i just the, the, uh, the black guys in our chat are all universally saying like this is bullshit yeah and i haven't even finished reading the article like I well mean, no I, but there's so many lies like there's yeah. three lies every paragraph and it's just yeah and I, I can understand why the passport bros are a thing all right sorry continue on no that's all right um so she wrote th this Georgetown professor, Dorothy Brown, she wrote this book a couple of years ago, and it's titled The Whiteness of Wealth, How the U.S. Tax System Impoverishes Black Americans and How We Can Fix It, Analyzing the Issue at Length. Brown's research found that, quote, tax policies were made with the intent to benefit white Americans, end quote, many of which she traced back to the Jim Crow era. I, anyway. OK, no, no, no. She is a racist who is perpetually looking to be victimized so she doesn't have to work a real job and will fabricate all the data to make her particular group, as they all do, whichever group that might be, be the oppressed. There's not one bit of academic veracity or worth to that study. Go, going so back, do we have anything from the Jim Crow? What, what is no. that, like the, four, no. the 50s? But, uh, yeah, the 40s and 50s. There, there's... The tax code has been overhauled since then. Right? Yes. This is, I don't know how. Anyway. All right. Continuing. Continuing on. In January, even the Office of Tax Analysis, you want to bet. Guess who funded that Office of Tax I, Analysis? I'm sure it, it is It is a whiny group. I looked it up. Okay. In January, even the Office of Tax Analysis admitted as, mu admitted as much, noting that, quote, the tax expenditure for preferential rates may promote the income growth for white families relative to black families, which would work towards increasing income inequality by race and Hispanic ethnicity. It's clear. Yeah. Uh, would a sales tax solve this problem? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> yes. A sales tax is about as. They still find this. This. Oh, I wish I could say the word. This worthless quanta ha ha would still find a reason to bitch. Heads I win, tails you lose. Right. Okay. It's clear then that inequities in the IRS's operating procedures have had many African American families pay more to the IRS relative to their white counterparts. Can I grab my violin not to keep interrupting you? <laughs> go, go ahead. All right, hang on, hang on. Let, let me just say while he's gone, you guys, we will explain that. Like, I, I honestly spent some time preparing. I'm going to explain why things are the way we are, why, why things are the way they are. It's not racism. It's just the system is set up in such a way that um, I, I guess I'll just save it for when Clary gets back. But th there's a reason we see You'd be this. be amazed how hard it is to get a violin out of a case. <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't know you had a violin. Okay. Who gave you that? I bought it. I got it off Craigslist. All right, Donna Brown, Dorothy Brown, this is for you. All right, continue on. Woo. Um, that almost sounded as bad as the article. Um, it's clear then that inequities in the IRS is, oh, I said that. Um, yet the IRS still unveiled direct file, which will put the agency's biased algorithms, keep that word in mind, algorithms, biased algorithms to even greater use less than two days after admitting to inadvertently operating this biased system. You see how this article's like loaded with, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, why isn't the agency hitting the pause button on direct file and prioritizing becoming more equitable over becoming more powerful? Why isn't it conducting sweeping audits and investigations into its current operations before expanding its authority using the same faulty discriminatory procedures and systems that civil rights activists have called out? So <laughs> um, until the IRS does these things, direct file will re remain a recipe for failure, not fairness. Now, now time well, out. Let, let me ask something I think a, a lot of the audience has. What is direct file? Is that what the IRS files your taxes for? Yeah. You? Yeah. You guys, look for my tax. I'll put it in the link when I'm done with this in, in the description. Look for my stream about a year ago. It's, it's titled, uh, Will the IRS Start to Let You File for Free? They're trying to take over, you know, sort of like 
they're trying to make it so people can self prepare a little bit better, but it's going to be such a shit show and it's not going to work. And it's going to lead to more work on our desk since we have to fix it. So if, if I'm imagining this correctly, the IRS wants to make it easier, especially for poorer people. Yes. Yes. Sit down. Miss complaining. <laughs> it's some people who are not black are also poor, but I don't know if she's the thing that. is if they like and not the IRS did this to try to help whatever they're right. saying about they're they actually trying to help and of course look an article comes out that says well you but you know? but nothing nothing in in these parasites mind nothing can be let go without immediately doing the victim here's but here's my question so was the irs's idea like okay you go online and you enter in some key data you hit calculate yeah and it tells, that's what it was all right and somehow this is bigoted against black people that's what this article is trying to convey, although they're uh, basically they're trying to say the whole system, you know, is against them. And the, the they're saying they should have corrected everything, corrected everything before this was even rolled out. But it's impossible to correct everything. I'm about to explain what's really okay. going on here. All right. You know, we get through the article. All right. And so. Um, so basically, they say until the IRS does these things, direct file will remain a recipe for failure, which is like, so what should they have not have even tried? Continuing on, Wyden is right. Quote, you cannot have equality in society if algorithms and other automated systems that affect people's lives treat them differently based on the color of their, their skin. End quote. Stop. That's not what's going on. But let me ask you this. You know they, they're lying, right? Yes. You know. <clears throat> I'm so, about to debunk all of this. Okay. All right. Go on. Well, we are. Um, right. The IRS is paying lip service to stomping out this bias, and it's without question well intentions in its goals. But as oh, you're gonna love this part, Larry. But as former NAACP executive director Benjamin Chavis argued, it won't be able to <laughs> it won't be able to do so if it puts preparing our taxes before correcting the problems related to its collection of them. I should be in charge of the NAACP. And yeah. I'm not joking you. I'd actually drastically improve black people's standards of living. <clears throat> I would. These the, the NAACP hasn't done anything. I mean, they've just gotten a lot of funding from what All I All they did gather, is whine but, and complain. Know. Yeah. Jesse Jackson's rich. I don't, I don't see anyone else on the South Side rich. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That 30 second story. He was on mm -hmm. the same flight as me one time when I was coming back from a DOJ criminal tax case. Oh, he was yeah? sitting behind me. I, Clary, this was in 2007. I was so tempted to turn around and say something, but I was like, that's just going to get me. And no, so I didn't. no, you get in trouble. Yeah. Right. And he had these big old bodyguards with him. Yeah. So one of them was sitting next to me. Um, so continuing on, rather than begin direct file, the, remember this part, the IRS should use the $83 billion in funding increase proposed by President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act to make its operations more equitable. I did it. I've did several streams on that. So you know, we won't even go into that. All um, right. After conceding that racial disparities appear to exist in the IRS, Werfel wrote that the agency is, quote, dedicating significant resources to quickly evaluating the extent to which the IRS exam priorities examines priorities and automated processes and the data available to the IRS for use in exam selection contribute to this disparity. Again, I'm about to explain why this is bullshit. Okay. Okay. Werfel, the commissioner, also <laughs> wrote that the IRS is, quote, evaluating the potential impact of methodolo methodological changes to case selection. Um, I'll skip that part. Given that this problem is structural, Reform will actually pr prove costly and time consuming. Implementing direct file would now would only limit the resources the IRS would have to address this problem adequately. That could quickly become an issue given that just months ago, the agency cited a shortage of resources. So you see this man, like, you know, you ask for something, you get it, and then they find another problem. There is a significant, and I'm doing this constructively critically, and I'm gonna point out to, but our audience already knows. There is a percentage of people in the United States whose main job is to take the traits they were born with and make money off of that by acute, by claiming they are discriminated yeah. against. It is not strictly the black community. Obviously not. There are women who no. do this. There are yes. Hispanics. There are yes. Asians, Jews, uh, Dylan Mulvaney, uh, not straight uh, and the mentally ill. 
And what's worse is if you are a black person, you are a black person. There are people who will fake mental illness, besmirching. Like, let me ask the black community here. How many of y'all like Rachel Dolezal, the white girl that faked being black by taking pills and she all that? She has an OnlyFans account now. <laughs> well, okay. My my <laughs> point is, take all these people. You're, you are getting angry or upset. I've come to understand what the racket is, and I just call and point it out. What I would also like to point out to every group, if you believe you're discriminated against or not, how has that been working for you this entire time? Like nice. Jesse Jackson hasn't gotten one black person out of poverty. This Dorothy Brown, she enriches herself off of like, oh my God, the white man yes. out to get. Yeah, she's she's got a the um I'm sure Mr. Idiot lifelong <laughs> Democrat. <clears throat> <laughs> it's true it's true i've heard obviously i don't you know the 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 um the congressman who wrote this article has a rich but ain't none of them improved your situation the women are pissed off i don't know if your women are all pissed off more than they've ever have before yeah and so i know our team you know regardless of who you are you see it for what it is yeah. but i'm trying to make a reach out to people who would not be on our team i'm like you understand this is not going to solve your problem. Yes, You're not discriminated not. against by the IRS. You're not discriminated, uh, uh, you know, in, in this or that or, or or the other. And if you actually believe this and you take action on it, like, I can't believe I'm not going to. You are now no longer basing decisions in reality. You're basing decisions in what this Dorothy gal and the other guy are yeah. lying about. And that's why your decisions fail. And, and I'll give you a perfect example. How many times... Have I told women to stop majoring in dumb shit? Oh, God. You've written books on it. I mean, has a single one of them listened? Not many. From Not my really. Gallery. Right. Are women still making less than men? Yes, they are. And I just, you got to really ask who your friends are here. So I'm very curious to find out how they come up with that two to four number. Well, I'll just say that uh, to pay a compliment, like I, the guys who are in here and who, who follow you and everything, I just have the utmost respect for them because they're able to see through all this and they want to do something. They want to take action and like make improvements. You know, they're right. not they're not succumbing to this whole, you know, well, the system. I just I respect the hell out of people. Even that, at them. Even at wow, them. Even Marcus. Bra even Marcus Brown. The well, other Marcus, Marcus Brown's Brown. Friend. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. We're both Marcus. Brown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there's more. I'm gonna cut it off here because uh, yeah, let's let's break this down a little bit. Why why yeah, I'm very curious how they came to with the two to four number. Well, we're gonna talk about that. All right. Okay. All right. Clary, reasons why minority, but it was really it was about black Americans mostly, but reason right. why they appear to be audited more than non-minorities. Do you want me to just outline this or do you want to take a stab at it? I am I can't even take a stab at it because I know they go after larger income. So already most black, well, not most black, but well, yeah, I guess most of all of us fly below the radar, but an even higher percentage of black people compared to the baseline <clears throat> would be flying beneath this income requirement. No. So I get that. I get the opposite where it's like, well, how are you getting audited at a two to four times that of uh, the base population? I'm going to about to, I'm going to explain okay. everything as far as this goes. OK, right. uh, I forget who. Sorry, but said it earlier. So many when you Claire, when you think audit, tell me yeah. what pops into your head when I say you're getting an IRS audit. Explain to me the visual in your head. The visual is I claimed way too many deductions or or <clears throat> I had to. How did, how did you pop up on the radar to be audited? Something didn't make sense on my tax returns. Like it was so did a, off. Did a human or a computer catch that? A computer caught something. Like yes. I must have made a huge mistake on my yes. tax return. Okay. Yes. So what I'm saying is that the flaw, the primary flaw in this article is that they're like audit, 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 audit. Mo the vast fucking majority of audits, dude, I'm talking like 19 out of 20. What's that? 95% are 95. computer computer based a human has nothing to do with it they can talk about algorithms and everything there is a very good reason why that what well, at 2.9% to whatever what there's a damn good reason so i'm going to tell you why okay 
Clary, can we agree? Who makes more money? This is fact, and we can agree to this. This is like who makes more money? You know, whites or blacks on whites. average. On, on average, of course, whites. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a fact. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the earned income tax credit? You have told it to me, and I've already forgotten what it was. But it's something like if you're a parent and working, you get money. You no. Know? It's basically it's a federal tax credit for both. You don't even have to have a kid for it. You know, just your income has to be right. fairly low, but you're working. But you get a lot more if you do have a kid. OK, so what more if, black people would qualify for this uh, much, credit. much more. Yeah. And okay, again, right. I'm simply speaking statistically. I'm not inferring anything. You're not. Yeah. 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 OK. Now, here's the thing about the earned income tax credit. Clary, do you know it? anything about do you know the difference between what's called a non-refundable tax credit versus a refundable does, does that ring oh, a bell at no, all no no that doesn't no okay what it means is that if you have a non-refundable tax credit let's say that you hypothetically owe the irs fifteen hundred dollars i do your tax right. return you owe the irs fifteen hundred dollars but you're eligible for a two thousand dollar non-refundable credit does that mean you're getting a five hundred dollar refund? Or does that mean we bring the fifteen hundred to zero? And you bring the fifteen hundred to zero. Yes, that's okay. non-refundable. Right. That's yeah. non-refundable. All right. Refundable means not only are you getting, you know, everything you put into the system back, you know, everything you pay in taxes, the government is reaching into its treasure chest and giving you giving money. me extra money. Okay, yeah. got it. All right, that's a refundable one. You asked me why. Black Americans are subject to these higher like audit rates. Do you mm -hmm. think the IRS is going to set up the algorithm to really scrutinize more or less if they're literally reaching into the treasure chest and giving you money? Less. The they don't want. Yeah, they don't want to give you. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Like people don't file like, ha ha, I got away from the IRS. Right. They're going to come after me. It's like, no, it's because you owe them money because otherwise it would have contacted yes. you. Right. OK. Yes. Right. Yes. And um. Right, Nick and Steve, the additional child tax credit is an example of a refundable. So, and the reason that Black Americans are subject to these higher audit rates, again, which are computer-based for very good reason, the algorithm is set to be, to anybody who claims the earned income tax credit, you're basically automatically going to get audited by these computer systems. Do you think there's a little bit of fraud or a lot of fraud that goes on? With I, I'd guy? say I, I wouldn't even necessarily say fraud. It's certainly I would say there's Confusion, just mistakes. Too. Mistake. Yeah, I, I should have said mis fraud. Yeah, I well, said no, fraud. I, I yeah. agree. Fraud because like, well, who does? Oh, I'm going to I'm going to deduct this, you know, whatever swing set or something like so. OK, so you standard. I'm not talking Jeff, not Jeff Bezos. Um Who's the Warren guy? Buffett. No, the guy who ran a Buffett. hedge fund into the ground. I'm not saying there's multi-billionaire tax evasion. I think it's just Bob trying to eke out a couple extra hundred bucks. Is to have fraud? Okay, yeah, technically, I guess. But I would say at least half of it is the damn tax code is so complicated. Yes. And unless you have a background uh, in it, you're going to make mistakes. Exactly. I even put in my notes, I put, it can lead to both confusion and or fraud. I mm -hmm. should have said fraud. I just, confusion or fraud. Okay. Right. So the, the reason that black Americans get audited more is because they make less money and they're able to claim the earned income tax credit because of this. And because Which, it's a, ref go ahead. And that is what's increasing their audit rates yes. because that triggers the, okay. All right. Remember, this is just how it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that's reason number one. And this is reason, well, that's reason number one, a, this is reason number one B. Okay. Now this pool of taxpayers due to their statistically lower income, do you think they can afford to pay somebody like me to do this the right way? No, no, <laughs> they, no, no, they, they can. cannot. So again, you know, this direct pay that the article was talking about with the IRS, they're trying to find a way to, to, fix this. You know, the IRS is basically saying you can't afford a taxpayer. We're going to try to point you in the right direction. And then you get this article that's basically saying, well, you guys are racist, you know, fuck you. So mm -hmm. by trying to fix this problem that they can't, you know, afford somebody like me to do it, it led to criticism with this. So you can criticize the system that is set up. But the thing is, anytime the government is going to reach into the treasury's chest and give you money, not your money back, but give you money, you're going to get audited, meaning it's always going to be checked. OK, 
So, so what ends up happening is what happening now. Okay, they're always going to go after higher because they can't cost benefit rationalize going after right. lower income. So there's two groups of people getting audited: those that are higher income, um, and they just take a sample from that, yeah. and also something is a follow according to the computer on those tax returns of higher yeah, income. Yeah, it's called a correspondence. Audit. Yeah, <laughs> and because there's just simply higher volume of people with this earned income tax credit. They are also triggering the audience. So these are the two groups that are getting audited. Yes. Okay. Listen, there's, okay. In our group that we're talking about with this higher audit, the thing is, like you said, mistakes. This is not anybody trying to cheat the system. You can mm -hmm. only, this is particularly with the earned income tax credit, only one parent can claim a child. Okay. So if, the, if you're not filing jointly, you have two separate right. parents. Only one of them can claim the child. And a lot of times there's no communication. So it's whoever ends. Go ahead. No, oh, just I'm yeah. just saying they both claim the child because they don't get their financial right. act together. So, right. so whoever okay. claimed the child first, <laughs> right, gets, you know, the EITC. They're not being audited. It's this the one who claims them second, who tries to claim them, who thinks that they're eligible to, but they can't due to lack of communication. Wait, wait. Are you telling me an eight whitey sitting down with his nightly whiplash mustache and saying, let's program the IRS code to be no. this? Like, are you saying it's just an overly complicated tax system? And yes. even though well intended, you gave a benefit that disproportionately benefits to yes. black people, but at the same time complicates their tax return that it triggers more audits. Yes. <clears throat> Clary, does this mean the IRS is racist? And I no. hate the IRS. No, the IRS is not. Well, the computer can't be racist. That's it. It's uh, but that article is like algorithm 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 i'm like but, but the, the article is intellectually dishonest yes it's disingenuine it dorothy brown or whatever her name is and the guy who wrote the article are race hustlers the race the horse that's yeah. yeah that's what they are what what i would like to point out again is well did you hear now this might be a year too old but it was going around on the instagram so you know double check but the Oregon governor did away with like standards testing to I graduate. Saw, yeah, I saw you posted that on Twitter. Okay. Does that help black people? The whole no. point was to help increase the, the, the standardized test scores for, for young black or poor black uh, people. That's... Do, okay. Is it going to, is it going to increase your test scores? No. Well, it will like, it will, it will increase your passing rate, right? Yeah. Okay. But... Does it teach you how to do taxes? No. Does it help you out at all in the real world? No. All it did, and by the way, look out for white women that want to help you. Okay. All Don't it trust did, them. No. All it did was prevent yet another generation of well, and it's and it it's also other poor kids or kids who aren't doing well in school. It doesn't just affect black kids. But disproportionately, it's going to just have a negative effect on black kids. Do you think any of them are going to know how to do their taxes growing up? Do you think this? And who caused that? These people that claim that they have good intentions, but they're they're fucking clueless. It, in a sense, it actually is racism by white people, but it's liberal white women, governors of Oregon. <laughs> it's, it's the Democrats. And all I want, all I want is a sales tax. That's it. I just want a sales tax and it all goes away. Clary, I'm legit worried I could get canceled for this live stream. No, I you mean, can't not, because you're trying yeah. to actually help out black people among other poor and disadvantaged groups. You're trying to introduce the truth because look, okay, have the Democrats and the leftists done a damn no, thing to tangibly... Care. So we got to come up with different ideas. And I simply argue, and this is what you're doing, is that you have to empirically and accurately measure and discover what is going on. So you can say, this is the problem here. Do I hate women because I tell them to stop majoring in stupid shit? Don't hate women. No, I would dare anyone to claim otherwise. Are you trying to keep black people oppressed? No, I'm trying, you're trying to... to get it so they don't get an audit. But is YouTube slash Google would understand this? You know, they're, they, they're just... you know what? I think they would, because when if you say, no, I want you to watch this video, you the the only difference. OK, the people, the censors at big tech and YouTube and all that, they presumably want to help all people equally and help out the disadvantage. Right. Right. 
we have the same goal, except we would argue it's a different treatment. Ours is truth and reality and empiricism. There's this touchy feely leftist bullshit. And we just haven't given people enough money yet. We're both like, you know, but I, I would argue ours is much more humane because it's realistic. It'll actually work. So I, I guarantee you show them this. Like, no, you watch that and you tell me if we're somehow what would really be oppressing is, is well, the article, the, the, the guy wrote, oh, the IRS is starting out to get you. Oh, don't do anything. Just sit here and, and blame it on other people. Meanwhile, here we are. Major in engineering. Don't have kids you can't afford. Join the military. Get the GI Bill. Stay in shape. What horrible advice we're giving everyone. It so just, don't don't you're not gonna lose don't lose sleep over it. This is I'm such, not. I just, and it's so tiring. I gotta imagine all the minorities actually give a damn about their life and women. They gotta be so sick of this shit. They gotta be so sick of being poor or second rate in terms of like income per capita or life expectancy. They gotta be tired right. of it. That's why we do have it. I mean, Dark Man Jeff, Dre, all those guys. They all they all doing better because they're doing stuff in the real world. So don't don't worry about this. I mean, if anything, it, it, maybe maybe the censors and orders at YouTube and Google and Facebook, maybe you might listen to an alternative idea that actually might be able to grow some legs and help people. But I, there's there's no way they could claim that you oh man you just trying to hold people down. It's Let's, so old. It's like forty freaking years old. It's tiring. So I'm saying, you guys, the IRS is my natural adversary. I have every incentive in the world to talk shit about it and to try to, uh, they ain't racist. This is just, it's set up that if you're going to get money from the government, it has to be looked at. Dare, dare I say this? Huh? File better? File your tax returns more accurately? That might be, you know, oh my God, I, I speed and I get tickets. Stop speeding? Well, Claire, I guess so. Uh, so to cap all of this off, I have a. Uh, how do we fix? How do, do I have to grab my the, violin again? Is this going to be might. more whiny bullshit? All right. You might. I'll well, need your thoughts too, because this is. You remember that Stanford article that they were kept referencing by that? Oh professor? yeah, yeah. What did it have? A I sample size. I made of a few notes. I read that whole fucking thing this morning, so I could see how we fix this. Okay. Uh -huh. Are you ready? Here we go. All right. <laughs> Here, point number one. Quote. Require the IRS to annually report on its enforcement activities by race. If they find a disparity, they can fix it and they can transparently tell us how they're going to fix it. Clary, is there any box on your tax return that says what race you are? No, they couldn't even do it if they wanted to. So how the fuck is the IRS supposed to Why are you getting to angry? Do they do because they don't I don't this. like this who, shit. Let's look, up, let's look up the woman or the guy who wrote this study. What's their name? It was, uh, I just had it. It was that, it was the same woman that Georgetown. Dorothy? Um, oh, we don't really look her up. Yeah, you saw she's that. A liar. Yeah, we know she she's a liar. She's a race Stanford whore. And, she's a race yeah. pimp. I got it. Yeah. We, yeah. We don't, have to, don't get pissed off at her. Just look at how ugly she is and realize she's never going to fall in love or have any real job. Just, just enjoy. I just don't see how that's any type of suggestion. You know, it, it's. You keep, you keep thinking she wants to help black people. She doesn't. She just wants to keep her position and get government funding. She's an academic. Fucking academics. That you could you could just ignore her. I just when I read that, I was like, how? Oh. How? It can't she, be done. Do you think she's ever paid for anything in her life? Do you think she even knows <laughs> like like what a what a budget is? All she knows is white collar panhandling. Yeah. All right, continue on with her ridiculous study. Uh, again, from the same goddamn study, which was horrible to read, her, her second suggestion is this. Tax, again, this is supposed to be how to eliminate racism. Mm. Taxed income from stocks at the same rate as income from labor. No tax loopholes for income okay, from stocks. Okay, so now, now she's just going for straight communism. She's going to tax right. capital gains at 40%. Right. Right. What the fuck? Like that has nothing to do. Exactly. It's just give us more money. That's all that it has is. Nothing to do with audit rates. She's basically saying, well, let's let's change tax policy to get this. Like this has absolutely nothing to do with what they're claiming the problem is. Nothing. Am I wrong about that? I mean, when no, I read that. But, well, I was here, like, let me ask you this. What would happen if you decided to tax income? I'm sorry. <laughs> capital gains at income level. Well, any investment in this country is going to dry up. Would that benefit gone. the black community? 
what is my incentive to invest in any type of capital? Right. Is, is there going to be a new restaurant opening up or yeah. No. I, it, <clears throat> I don't know if that, uh, anyway, so somehow some academic, you know, reached that conclusion. Right. She, that's a big reach from, Hey, maybe we ought to tighten up the, uh, the audit standards at the IRS to let's just take 40% of capital gains. Fucking God. Um, all right. The last one was my absolute favorite. Joseph Hatchett, Scott. I'm so glad that you're ready. I see him in the chat for this. You're going to love this one, Scott. Claire, are you ready for this? <laughs> Whoa. Incentivize tax professionals to lower their fees for those who have lower income levels so that they can get the same type of assistance as higher income taxpayers who prevent errors and possible correspondence audits. Clary! No! No! What the fuck is my incentive to do anything remotely close to that? There is no incentive. Why would I do that? Um... I don't know you. Well, you wouldn't, but in her mind, you're going to do it because otherwise she's going to accuse you of being racist. You're not helping the poor people by essentially either eliminating your fee or seriously cutting it down. Why don't you want to be a slave to poor people? Clary, let me explain something about people in my industry, some of which are in the chat. Okay. Okay. We don't see white. We don't see black. We don't see brown. What color do we only see? Hopefully no color because you're online and you don't want to, you just see an email. Like you see black. Okay. You see black and white, the text, you don't see the color of that person. We see green. Okay. Green, the money. Okay. never mind. Yeah. I thought you meant you maybe. No, 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 no. Your no. I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, no. metaphorically. There is nothing in this entire world that is going to convince me that I should work harder only to charge less. It ain't going to happen. No one is going to do that. That's not how business works. We're mm -hmm. under the gun enough. As I've said a zillion times, there's a shortage of us. It ain't going to happen. There's nothing they can do to do to make us do this. It, well, it, and <clears throat> it's kind of like the Soviets. Like, we need more farmers. It's like, well, let them keep their profits. So you shouldn't have killed them all off. <laughs> right. <laughs> or maybe pay them. But like, no, they. but you, you're talking to an academic. Look, we don't have to go into this Dorothy Brown's background. I guarantee you she's worthless. She's never re worked a real job. She, she may actually believe this stuff. She just thinks it's, well, more money. We just need more money. Um, and so she had probably a scholarship paid for. She had, She's a professor. She hasn't worked. She probably thinks, it's, well, we just get more money from the government. And you should make it easier for us because we're black. And, and that's, that's literally, I'm not kidding. That's about as intelligent as it is. There would be no more nuanced or practical strategy in her mind. Uh, but I also think she's an ideologue and that all she knows is theft. That's it. This is why when I you you joked when I called you, you're like, Chad, what are you doing up so early? Well, one, I had work to do. It was like, man, when I saw this article, this is one of the first things I popped open on my phone. I may, like, may I may I recommend something so that you don't become as angry as me? Like you're going through your hate <laughs> and anger phase now. Tell me. She might be a true believer, all right, but she deep down inside knows she just doesn't want to work for a living. And she of wants course. to advocate a system where black people don't have to work for a living. Nothing is their fault. It's always racism. There's no ownership or responsibility. With that type of personality, what kind of personal life, what kind of people do you think are in her life? I have to think that it's very unfulfilling because, I mean, why would you focus all your energy on this? And if your entire ideology is one of victimhood and complaining and just avoiding work at all costs, because she is an academic, what type of people are even going to hang out with her? The same, you know, ridiculous. Would you like to hang out with no. a bunch of middle aged Karens in an academic setting? Do you think this woman has one real friend? No. God, no. 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 And she is ugly. I know that sounds like a cheap shot. She's ugly. There ain't there ain't no Denzel Washington banging on her door to go ask her out. And I, I got to tell you guys, just please listen to me, guys. <clears throat> Everyone, I know you hate these people, <laughs> and they are parasites, but they are so miserable. They are so freaking miserable. You don't, you don't want to be them. You really don't.
And so, yeah, she's lying to you. So don't let it get you angry. I mean, it was what New York Daily Post, uh, the New York Daily News, and which is um, a, which is a tabloid. OK, it's meant yeah. to get you excited. All right. This prof uh, the the congressman who wrote it. What is he? What is his life? Remember that <clears throat> I use this as an example, the Seattle alderman who filed complaints that that the people were using hoses to spray off human shit off the streets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said it reminded the elderly black community about getting hosed down and causing post-traumatic stress because they were hit by fire hoses in the in the protest, the civil rights days said that yeah now Jeez. think about that guy that guy hates white people so much and he was like 74 at the time he says that that's his entire life all he does in life whitey 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 they're using hoses you know what that re chad if you saw the fire people come out with the hoses what would it remind you of it would remind me of them putting out a Fire. A fire, right. Or maybe the kids, they take off the fire hydrant in a hot summer day in New York or Chicago. Right, That's yeah. what I would think. This guy has wasted his entire life warping his brain so much. He thinks, oh, my God, that's going to trigger all the old black people in the community to remember the 1964 civil riot days. His life was over a complete waste. God, I just what is this not a waste of life? Or It is. That's what I'm saying. Like, don't just enjoy the decline, man. Like, okay, have girls treated us well in our generation? <laughs> no. Do they seem happy? Do you want to, do you want to like, I can't believe women are treating us like this. So it's like, have fun treating us like this. We're going to go have fun and do podcasts and hike and maybe do some stuff while you're walking around Reno with some crazy Mexican dude. You know, like literally think about your, your life right now and cuddle welcomes. Yeah. And, and I'm talking the mental life. Like where does living a lie get her? Like just a wreck, miserable life. I got to admit, man, I'm pretty happy these days. So I, I shouldn't let shit like this get to me, but it, I don't know. I don't like it when they, this is my industry. This is, I just, I don't like this shit. It, here's the thing. They can't enforce it. No. They can't just tell you CPAs that you just won't like, yeah, go ahead, try and enforce it. Um, you can't make us do something. Yeah, you can't make. Yeah, you're just like, no, OK, I'll, I'll just go somewhere else. Or No, I'm not doing it. Um, and they could go ahead and tax people at 40 percent capital gains rates, but you'll immediately kill any corporate investment and there won't be any expanding business. Although one can make the argument they're not really expanding now. <clears throat> like there's. The, the life of a beggar has got to suck. Even if it's a white collar beggar like this Donna Brown or that, it's beg, 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 beg. That's and all never it get is, off. is That's all it is, is just, and they won't get off their ass and do anything. The sad thing is they get a bunch of other people to listen to them, either because they share a race or a gender or a sexual preference or whatever in common. And it's just too damn, oh, yeah, it's not my fault. It's the straight people's fault. It's like, yeah, but you're straight. Not now, because then I can complain about it and get some preferential treatment. And it, Okay, it's one thing to be Donna Brown, not Donna Brown, Dorothy Brown. Mm -hmm. All right. Could you imagine being a straight person and then faking that you're gay so you could be popular? God, I mean. Like, I could you imagine sucking a dick? Because you're so afraid of work that you want to act like you're gay so you could get like a, you could check a mark box on a preferential hiring form. Would you, Chad, would you suck a dick so you could get affirmative action treatment? I think I would self-delete before I would do something like that. Yeah, you would. But, man, there are millions of people out there faking it. And they actually believe it because not only is it like, oh, I get a, a preferential treatment on the application box, but oh my God, I'm not straight. I'm so popular now, especially kids in high school. And the, the, the most extreme form is now where they go get the, the gender surgery just because they want to be popular as opposed to actually being legitimately not straight trans, whatever. And uh, no, I seriously want to go through that. Dude, they're all faking it. And there's no way you can escape the mental pain that comes with it. N not at all. And not to mention the poverty. Look, just because you're, okay, you're straight, but you suck a dick. Does that, ink, okay, and you got, you got an extra 8% salary or you got hired 20% more frequently. Does that make your life all that much better? No. No, it's, because because if Claire, you're lazy, yeah. 
Well, is it laziness or, or stupidity? What is it? What's the cause of this? It, the main thing is laziness. Some people are just so cripplingly afraid of work, they won't do it. They'll do anything, How's anything. How's that a fulfilling life? It's not. That's that's my whole point is these people are miserable. <laughs> and instead of like – and then I would I would also argue like anyone in any group who is getting – and you are going to get approached. I mean male, female, Hispanic, uh, black, Asian, straight, gay, trans, not, whatever. You are going to be approached by the left, and they are going to tell you the most important thing about you is this trait whatever it is that you want to choose or you were born with. And if you believe them, you're cutting yourself off from humans. You're cutting yourself off from a socialization. You're cutting yourself off from love, be that fraternal, brotherly, familial, or actual romantic, because you are being a lazy, worthless person, substituting a trait you were born with, and lazy people who don't do anything aren't interesting. And above all else, by your nature, you're parasitic. So you're not just going to take money away from people. You're going to suck people's life up. Have you ever have you ever talked to someone who just talked about themselves all the time? Dude! Do you want to hang out with them? Fucking hell no. No. God, no. Right. Because they bring nothing but themselves, and okay, you might and be they're interested. boring. People and they're talk boring. About them, they're fucking boring, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm black. Well, good for you, Skippy. You're black, so you are. Do you do you play poker? You got a family? You hike? What do you do? You are an engineer? You know, God. like and and so when you put everything on that, like this gal does and what they're, what they're uh, unfortunately hoodwinking you know, or attempting to hoodwink the majority of black people. And they think it's like, Oh my God, you're oppressed. Da, 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 da. Your life is going to be horrible, horrible. If you fall for this bullshit. And you so, guys, no, you're not being discriminated against by the, by the computer at the IRS file better. <laughs> God. All right. We got a few more super chats and comments. Right. You you really don't think I'm gonna get canceled, right? I don't think so. No, absolutely okay. not. All right, I was worried if, about. If, that. You're not gonna get canceled. They they if anything they like demonetize it because it's a controversial topic, and advertisers may not want to do it. But I don't think you advertise these or, or monetize not these. Not really. No. Okay, then don't I mean, monetize this video. But they they might have you take it down. Fine. Yeah, fine. But I, I can't see the conversation we're having as we are fully intending to help people. You just can't. And I would even challenge it. I would even challenge it. We'll see what happens. I'll keep we'll you guys posted. I think you'll be fine. Nonstop Dre, five bucks. It's hard to make fun of Cappy. Both of us can't stoop hell. <laughs> Dre. Uh, why does Cappy love Michael Obama's arm so much? That's sus, but love is love. I, I don't love michelle obama i said michelle obama is an attractive woman i know i'm in the minority of the position there she always dressed like a woman she always dressed very feminine and i i am i am envious of the nuclear family that the obamas have and even though i disagree with the policies there is no doubt that barry spent time with his daughters so and no one can stoop as low as me i'm that low his father is from the country I went to high school. Kenya, right. Yep. And he's mm -hmm. dead. Yep. <laughs> uh, Hat and Clogs, 43, 34, two bucks. Happy Cappy, Chad B. Chab, Chad, money, Easter money, UWU. I don't know what UWU means, but thank I, you, Hat and Clogs. Someone told me what it was. I forgot what it means. Yeah. Thomas Landrum, five bucks. I, I searched. He didn't really have a message. He um, didn't? Okay. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah. Tom's just hanging out. Um, not all of these are super chats. I will read this one from Chunky Gecko. Black guy here. I want nothing to do with these black CPA groups or anything like it. Tired of having my efforts washed away because of assumed victimhood. Yes. I, right? I have a, well, I have a question for Chunky Gecko. All right. So if you're at the black CPA community or black CPA group, I, I would imagine there are some things specific to the black culture and CPAs that they would share in common. And, and I could see a reason for that group forming. But Chunky, if you've gone there, is it all boo hoo hoo? We're black CPAs. Oh, no. The debits and credits are harder. For, I mean, is it, a, is it a complaining group or is it actually a professional group? Where it's, oh, yeah, we're black. We're CPAs. You know, talk about different things within the industry. 
he's still here. So we'll, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping says. maybe he has an opinion because it would suck if it's just another whining victim group. In which case, th then here, think about this. <clears throat> Let's say you're a black CPA. And you, for cultural reasons, you just want to hang, and nerd reasons, you want to hang out with other black people who are CPAs. But every group you go to is a bitching and whining fest. Instead of like, can we just have some beers and talk about like, I don't know, Atlanta football <laughs> or whatever. Well, we you know, or, or music stuff that's culturally. Same thing with women. Is there a woman's group out there that's fun? Or is it all just a bunch of whining, complaining people? Because I can't imagine if you're a young lady and you want to join a professional women's group or whatever group that might be, it's going to be anything but ah, men suck, patriarchy, like, and that's not fun at all. CPAs don't really do that. Like, we just get together, commiserate about busy season, and yeah. Right. But does the black CPA community group do it? I would have to assume not. I mean, I, I just not. don't think so. I don't. Uh, Jacob Dornbush, Bursch, Bursch. Bush. Mm -hmm. He's been around. He's given us yeah, some good 25 ones. generous yeah. dollars. Would it be a good idea to spend a year in Chicago working for a Fortune 500 be beverage company? Currently, small town in Wisconsin working in IT. Worth a short stint there. Thanks, guys. You want to feel this one? I had the best summer of my life in Chicago, but that was over 20 years ago. I would, I would say no. I would stay at the small firm in Wisconsin, working in IT, get your experience because you're going to go to the big beverage company. You're going to have to live in Chicago. You're going to be a cog in the machine. I mean, it. at the same time, if you want to do big city living, I do it for a year and then get the hell out. But I I don't know. Chicago now, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. I mean, the girls back in my day, they were fun. Now it just sounds like they're hell. Well, Jacob, I would just say if doing this, and I know this is hard to predict, but if doing this could – potentially result in an extreme bump in pay i'd probably do it for a year but how can you predict that you know yeah, yeah. i'm i'd probably do it ray john two canadians remember liani lay lay oh look her up wait should i not look her up this was some kind of old cam girl i think i hear i'll look her lay liani ray john lay. did this before i think we regretted yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a Leonie. porn star. Don't, yeah. Okay, well, if it's just a porn star, fine. Leonie Lay. Lay. It's, it's a, it's a, a porn gram, star. It's a grandma porn star. A grandma. Oh, God. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no. God dang it, Ray John. Ray John, stop doing that. And become a prison <laughs> guard Wait, if you really want He said want don't to. look her up. We were idiots. We looked her up anyway. He paid. <laughs> okay. So what did we... Eric, Eric Burns Marsh has Wesley Snipes been reached oh, to comment. Oh my god. You know, real quick. There's a black guy I don't like the IRS. The problem, so this was back in 2008, 2007, 2008. He absolutely deserved to get indicted and he mm. deserved the 3 years in prison like I spent a year working on this case. The, as you can imagine, there were various media outlets that were trying to claim it was racism and it's like it's not racism. He blatantly cheated. This is not <laughs> When it comes to money, this is not a racist thing. Hey, here, here's simpler. If you keep blaming all your problems on racism, will any of these problems get solved? No. And will you improve? No. No. Like no. the fact you might have three baby mamas, guess what? That wasn't racism. That was you being too stupid to put on a condom. All right. And you can rage at the racial gods all you want. You still got five baby mamas and child support. It ain't going, you just. That's why I keep saying vasectomies and engineering degrees. Just follow. Just, <laughs> this isn't a hard formula. Anyone can follow it. Real quick, Larry, before I get, um, mm. you did a video recently. It was a guy who was trying to figure out if he should go into accounting or be a plumber. Mm. You you linked my channel. I got an yeah. immediate like 20 subscriber bump well, within like go. an hour. So yeah. thanks for that. I was I'm like, why pretty, is it going up? Like I'm this? a big time internet guy who does things and, and yells at the internet really good. I don't usually get a jump like that. So it was, uh... remember when we mentioned you on Fresh and Fit? <laughs> so they got off. Are, did they? They're off YouTube. Or... No, they're still on YouTube. I texted them. I said, "Hey, do you guys want to come on the show?" Because I I don't follow them. I mean, we're friends, but I don't follow them. But I said, "Hey, my audience and myself included would like to know, like, did you go Rumble? Are you still monetized in certain ways? Are you just selling direct ads? They're still doing their videos, so they're still going on and strong on YouTube." Um. 
<clears throat> yeah, on YouTube. So I, but I, you know, the kind of colleagues I, I wouldn't mind having them on and, and seeing what, uh, what's going on because that's, that's industry. Like, okay, why did you get bumped off? Did they even tell you? You know, because they were making YouTube was making a mint off of Fresh and Fin, a mint, and they got rid of them. Must have been from really high up, you'd think. Um, well, I thought this was funny. Two was two bucks. Al short sharped and owes are owed four point five million to yeah. the IRS. Well, black people don't have to pay taxes, and he's yeah. a Democrat. This That's... was a thing. This was a thing. Al Sharp is practically a pretty white girl on OnlyFans. She doesn't have to pay estimated taxes. That's not. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I'm down to about two OnlyFans clients left, and one of them's the one I had on the show earlier. My oh, cool. friend, yeah. yeah. Nonstop Dre, two bucks. Life isn't fair or equal. Why do people believe it? I don't know. I, I, I think they've been told for the longest time they're entitled to it. I mean, you should be treated fair and equally. Sure. But it's critical you understand in terms of opportunity and treatment, not outcome. That's I, that's I think, the big difference right there. Perfect. I'm going to read this one from the real anchor, Hector. Um, so it comes down to this. Should taxpayers be treated equally regardless of race or should the audits be determined by race? What? Everybody should be treated equally. Race should, just shouldn't be a factor when it comes to things like this. That's my opinion. But what is a? Here's my question. Does the computer know if you're mixed race? No, the computer knows nothing except that you took money out of the U.S. Treasury's, you know, budget so we need to make sure you were allowed to do that. It, I think this would be a great opportunity. You know where I would be for government funding? Huh? Like at they said of the eighty-three billion. You're right. You should have a how to prepare your taxes course offered in all high schools. I'll teach be required. it. Yep. And then that'll help out not just the black kids, but the white kids, Latino, you know, all the kids. Because yeah. they sure the hell ain't teaching it now. And then there you go. Problem solved until they find the next problem to bitch about. But we'll see if you know not to get angry about the fabricated problem they come up with next time. Yeesh. Hatton Clogs has a pretty good question here. Do you think lazy fools will do their own taxes? No. No, I don't think so. Mm -mm. I mean, you have to. But like you said, if if they don't hear back from the IRS, that means you they owed you money. Right. Yeah. So I, yeah it's, they're hurting themselves. Another reason you should not, not just pass on the black kids. Oh yeah. You graduated. Educate them on to, Hey, if you didn't hear from the IRS, that meant they owe you money. Go file your tax returns. You idiot. God, you're right. I think I need to do a course. Ray John, two books. Have you guys ever talked about Ted Turner, the CNN guy? No. Oh. I no, I doubt. Have you ever done a video alive? on him? No, he's still alive. He married Jane Fonda, so he should be dead. But yeah, he's he still dead alive. Sucked the life out of him. All right, I'll read this one from Scott. Uh, <laughs> Congress, because it's such an astute point. Congress would never tax capital gains. Congressman, absolutely. Would, uh, yeah, 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 ain't happening. Nonstop trade two bucks. IRS, it's Chad's fault. Minorities don't know taxes. <laughs> They're gonna they're gonna try, but yeah, oh yeah, it's your fault, Chad. The CPA, so uh this is from Chunky Gecko. We asked him if he'd Yeah, actually... if he it, is it a wine and fast or was it? Yeah, uh, I've never been looking at the videos, I'm not hopeful. When black people group together, they tend to start whining eventually. CPAs might be different though. I feel CPAs would be different. I think we're a different breed. Like we we just kind of want to get this shit done. Yeah. I'd I'd be I'd I'd be willing to, if Chunky if you want to go run a mission go go scope one out see what happens, you know just yeah. just to report back and then you could set up your own CPA society for non whiny black CPAs right. and then you'd be the cool black CPA group and everyone want to hang there you just have one rule no complaining no complaining yeah. Claire, this is the last one I'll read to finish everything off. This is from Karna Aranda. There's plenty of racism in the U.S., but people like Dorothy, the one that wrote that article, making things up impedes real progress. I could yeah. not agree more with that comment. Right. Yeah, and that kind of sums up this whole show. Right. So, Clary, thank you so much. I know this was a bit of a late night for you. Uh, I right. appreciate it. Um, is there anything else you want to say or add to any of this? Or? Uh, related, uh, for those of you who might be new to the show. And like, oh, I don't like that white guy. Uh, go get my book, The Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty, starring our good friend Marcus Brown on the cover. Yes. 
And uh, if, I'm, I'm serious as we've talked about race and discrimination and um, uh, desperate, not uh, desperate, but disparate effects on minorities and in, in this case, auditing. Look, the general goal is to not be poor anymore. You'd like to be rich. Please go get that book. And then you don't have to be black. You just have to be poor. <clears throat> Read that book. And chances are, I can't guarantee you're going to be Jeff Bezos, but I, I almost here. You want my guarantee? You want my guarantee? Here's my guarantee. You're going to make Asian man money. That you follow the advice in that book, you'll be making Asian man money. And so uh, there, that's if, if you're tired of being poor, generation after generation, dead last, well, you get one life. It's going to end here pretty soon. A little bit shorter because you're black. You have less life expectancy. Make a count. Go get that book and check it out. I'll just say, I remember when it came out and I was really surprised the sales weren't as high as I thought they'd be black males only make up six and a half percent of the population it's not a not a big demographic selling to um i did i did it more for economic and philosophical purposes um and then we also i did have a a lot of black and hispanic uh men in my clientele so i i could just write the book and like here take this you don't have to consult me for an hour or anything like that um Mm -hmm. but yeah they're not they're not that big of a population now if i sold a book called Men suck, and you should be able to pig out on all the ice cream in the world you want. You go, girl, Lizzo trademark. That would sell millions. You'd be millions. a guest on The View. If Oprah would say, oh, my God, the Oprah book, and you told women what they want to hear. Uh, Claire, thank you so much. No you guys, uh, I'll probably do another stream next week because I enjoy these. And, Clary, we should hang out when? Soon? Soon.